Welcome everyone, I am James West and this is the Lion's Den Academy where we strive to bring you closer to God through an in-depth study of His Word. One such way that we are doing that is through this new series that we are doing of daily devotionals that come from the amazing people over at The Chosen. Now today is day four of this series, so if you are new here, I would highly recommend that you start at day one, and I will link that here and in the description as well. The message for today is titled Words, and it focuses on the passage found in John 1, 1 through 5, which reads, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Word was in the beginning. Before the heavens and earth, before sunsets and the Pacific, before wildflowers and whales and strawberries and freckles. He was, he was before all of it because he made all of it. The Word spoke the world into existence, which is perhaps why Jesus was called the Word. By his words came all that we know, and by his words come light and knowledge, healing and hope. The words Jesus spoke changed the course of history, along with the lives of 12 very ordinary men. The disciples were an unconventional group, made up largely a fisherman, an anarchist zealot, and a thieving tax collector, none of whom would have scored very high on the likability scale. They were rough around the edges and ranged from the salt of the earth and smelly to the downright sketchy. They were loud, proud, greedy, defensive, skeptical, and independent or some combination thereof. So it's a wonder such men wholly responded to Jesus' simple words in Mark 1.17 follow me. That full passage in Mark reads, Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat, mending their nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the, the hired servants and followed him. What in the world? They dropped everything and followed him, just like that. Now we get a little bit more context regarding Simon, Peter, and Andrew in Luke 5, 1 through 11. Jesus had performed a miracle just before his audacious request, but still it was a crazy talk. Um, so I have to imagine the words sounded different from Jesus than they would have from anyone else anyone other than the Word. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. As strange as it is to imagine dropping everything familiar for, for what is entirely unknown, somehow the trade made sense. In Jesus' life, so his words transcend circumstances and break down barriers. They light up dark corners, removing fear, doubt, and self-preservation. They bring clarity and elevate our understanding of what's real, true, and important. They take us from completely missing our purpose to seeing in neon that our only reason for being is to follow the one who spoke us into being. The disciples gave up all they had to follow Jesus when he called them. For three years, they sat under his teaching, listened to him pray. They watched him welcome children and honor the least of these. They heard him tell jokes, laugh at their jokes, and be respectful to his mom. They witnessed him heal the sick, defend his father's house, and chastise the self-righteous with words. And they stood helpless when he said no words on his way to the cross. So of course, 12 ordinary men, initially full of hot air and void of purpose, became the very ones so changed by Jesus' words that they would fearlessly take them to the ends of the earth. And with that, I just would like to pray with you over what we just read. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your words. Um, the words that you've spoken um, not only have you know, created everything that we've just talked about and, and to include us and in everything that we cherish so much in this world, um, but Lord, they've also provided us with a lifetime of, of treasure uh, found in the 66 books of your um, Bible, Lord. And we just thank you that that Every, every time that we come to that, we are found with, with a, a new revelation, new insight, new stories that we can connect with from a personal level that teach us about you and teach us how to be like you, Lord. And, and Lord, we just ask that you uh, fill us with your Holy Spirit, um, that not only just to give us a, a burning desire and, and fire inside us to thirst after the knowledge found within your Bible, Lord, and within your word, um, but also that, that, that Holy Spirit that you send into us, and it grants us even greater understanding that we 
can imagine uh, so that we can fully understand everything that, that we can soak up from your word, Lord. Um, and, and with that, and not only to better equip ourselves and, and know you better and, and become better Christians, but also so that we can then better share your word to others that need to hear it so we can bring others to you and become fishers of men as well ourselves. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. All right. And with that, we will wrap up today's video. Um, if you haven't already, I would ask that you leave a like and comment to help YouTube push this content to those that need to hear it. Um, and if you aren't subscribed yet, I would also invite you to do so to stay updated on each video that comes out. Um, also, as we've just prayed for a better understanding of God's word and committing ourselves to studying it more, I would also recommend that you check out the study that we're going through on the book of Matthew as well. Um, the latest video um, for that series um, has been you know, edited and it's uh, in the process of being uploaded right now. It'll probably come out before this one does. So I would definitely recommend you to check that out. That's all about um, the, the part in the Jesus's uh, Sermon on the Mount where he talks about um, judge not lest you be judged. And that is a very often uh, misused phrase uh, right up there with probably one of the top uh, misused phrases or misquoted phrases of the Bible as well. So um, I, I, I invite you to, to check that out as I shine, shine some truth on what that passage really means. Um, so I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, but until then, God bless and keep you.